All right guys, so I've added the uh, include GNI and made these two variables and I have added this code. So uh, this is from the previous episode. This is the new stuff. So what this does is it gets the generated Java VMs, tries to get an end and does the patch current thread and checks if the end was great or not. So if we're successful, it says GNI works. As for the DLL main, that it has not been changed. Build that bad has not been changed. So let's just do a test and see if we're able to make a proper GNI end. We start off with it being null, then we check if it's no longer null. So inject this. As you can see, we get the GNI works. Now let's go over how GNI actually is used. All right, now that we know that the GNI environment is set up, we just need to learn how to use it. So what is GNI? GNI is the Java Native Interface. It's a library for Java Native Code to communicate. This allows for Java Code to call stuff like uh, C and C++ code, and Native Code can call Java code and uh, read and write to Java variables. So the GNI end. In order to use GNI, you need a pointer that's uh, what we made just now. And uh, it's unique to every single thread. So large projects with multiple threads will have multiple GNI and pointers. And you always have to use the right one or you might crash. So some common GNI data types you'll always be using is the J class, J method ID, J field, and J object. For uh, common GNI functions, there's find class, which returns a J class. Get method, ID, get method ID, which returns a J method ID, and get field ID, which returns a J field ID. And then there is also obviously functions to actually use these fields. So find class uh, it takes in just a C string and returns a J class if a class is found. It can then be used to get uh, methods and fields. So then get method ID and get static method ID. These take two parameters, the Java class instance, name of the method and the signature. So I have an example here where if you look at the parameters, foo is the name of the method, and then those uh, brackets v as the signature. So it takes zero parameters and it's a void function, that's why there is a v. And then on the last line, and call void method the object, and then the method uh, id is the same as my object dot foo. And then get field ID takes in J class and two J strings, very similar to J method ID. The second parameter is the name, and the last one is the signature, which type. And I have an example here at the bottom as well. So for JNI signatures, parameters are always represented by a single capital letter, so int is I, float is F, that was D. Boolean Z, char is C, and a couple others for like long, quite short, stuff like that. Objects are represented by the class name with a prefix and suffix. So the prefix is L, suffix is a semicolon. So an example is L, column path to my class, semicolon. So let's actually use JNI now. How would we call mc.theplayer.jump from C? Well, we need the J method ID of the jump function. We need the J object of the player and we need the J object of the Minecraft instance. And obviously we need the J classes to access all the methods and fields. Also, uh, we'll be doing everything in vanilla Minecraft and the names of classes, methods and fields are all obfuscated. So they're gonna look a bit weird. So this is the code, well, the, an idea for the code of how will be calling mc.theplayer.jump. First we get the Minecraft class, then we get an instance of the Minecraft class. Then we get the player field in the Minecraft class. We do get object field to get that instance. So we get an instance of the player. If we're not loaded into a world, then the player is null, so we have to check for that. Then we get the class of the player so we can get the method of jump. And finally, we call jump from the player. All right, so this is the, right here we have the code to make, to call mc.theplayer.jump. 
which means that if we're loaded in game, our player will jump. But before we run this, let's see if we can actually understand what's going on. So, I have a bunch of these weird names, and the reason they are so undescriptive is because Minecraft is obfuscated. So, let's take a closer look. Open up uh, MCP mapping, mapping Viewer. Go to 1.8.9 Stable 22. This one right here. Load mappings. Now, we have uh, AV. Let's see if we can find out what that is. So, we're looking for the obfuscated name AVE. Let's see. Okay, we have AV. So, that's Minecraft. That Minecraft client, this is the main Minecraft class, which has AVE. Inside of here we have the player, which has an obfuscated name of H. So, first we call get Minecraft, which returns LAV, an instance of Minecraft, and we get the field H, which we just saw in here, that's the player, H. And the player has a signature of BW, that's obfuscated name so if we do bw that's entity player sp so that's why we have bw in here and then we call the function bf which is a void function that takes no parameters so inside of here let's see if we can find this okay small mistake on my part the jump function is located inside of entity player not entity player sp so this is entity player sp this is entity player so, entity player sp inherits entity player, so it gets all of its functions. So there's a lot of functions in here, which uh, should include jump. I saw it here just a moment ago. Jump, there it is. So that's bf, it's void. So as you can see, bf and void. So, let's see if we can get this to work. The first thing we need to do is actually load into a world because otherwise the player is named. Okay, now we have the chat open, so it shouldn't be possible for us to jump. But the moment that we inject this DLL, we should see our player jump up. And as you saw, we just jumped, which means this GNI code ran properly, and we did cold weight method on the jump function. Throw a couple cards, bud. Go over to J Rocks. This guy's fucked us around so bad. We go to jail. They rip off the money from Corey and Trevor, and they buy all kinds of stereo equipment to record and stuff with. Like, that's bullshit. Where'd you guys get all the stereo equipment and mixing shit? And all man. this mixing there and slotty things? Man, we've been fucking with groceries, man. Making Big Skrillo doing that shit. Gang, man. groceries, dog. We selling this shit, you know what I'm saying? Stealing that for parts to pick up, right? Dad owes me 50 my fuckers, yes, but that's all right, boy. Don't worry about that. You want some Twizzlers or some shit, boy? Help yeah, yourself, my fucker. Go so on. J-Rock disc for you, boy. Yeah, that's that's yeah. crazy. Because I, uh, I don't know. I had a feeling maybe you got some of this with Trevor and Corey's money. My fucking weed money. We knew this was coming, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we got nine grand from Corey and Trevor to be on the album. Which is a bargain, you know what I'm oh, saying, in the yeah, recording man. business, Definitely. right? But then we knew something was up, man, because where are those motherfuckers getting nine grand at, man? Thought maybe that's how you bought all this fucking stuff? Mm. Trevor and Corey's money? I didn't even know those motherfuckers yeah, had man, money, they, dog. Fuck them. Buys all the stereo equipment and doesn't even give a fuck. Making up excuses. My mom's left her GST man. We check right when she went to Moncton. You know what I'm saying? This mixer came from the flea market. She had a lemonade stand. We bought a bunch of shit, you know what I'm saying? Half price, dog. I think this shit's hot. I've been saving my own money and shit on the side I found that drum machine in the ditch because some motherfucker chucked it away. One man's triz ass, you know what I'm saying? So I said, fuck it, I'm taking all the stereo equipment back, and I did. Come on, man. What? You know what I'm saying? Don't. J-Rock, baby. J-Rock, baby. J-Rock, baby. J-Rock, baby. You can't take that shit, dog. Come on, dog. I went back to the laundry room, there's more fucking stereo equipment on top of the laundry machine. Two turntables and a fucking microphone. So I took all that stuff, smashed a bunch of albums, which maybe I shouldn't have did, but fuck it. And then I said, you know what, I'm taking their dryer, too. 